Welcome, welcome, welcome everyone. We are back with a notch higher YouTube living channel and I am so excited. I have two wonderful young men. Well, they're younger than me, but they're grown men <laughs> that are special and precious to me. And I am so excited. We're gonna get right into this because I'm not keeping the brothers long and I want them to come back one day. So they're not gonna come back if I keep them for an hour. So. Welcome, Derwin, and welcome, Byron. <laughs> thank you for having me. <laughs> thank you, thank you. So I'm going to get right into it. Like I said, it'll be a little bit differently. Um, done. I'm going to ask you both, how do you know each other? Um, so I, I'll, I'll say this. I don't, I don't really remember if I physically met you at your wedding. Mm -hmm. I don't really remember. I knew mm -hmm. of you. Um, because, you know, everybody's been friends for a long time, but I don't know if I've actually met you physically, um, at the wedding, but I, I would say my first vivid memory of us really kicking it was, um, we had a, um, party at the house. Okay. And, and, um, Byron, I don't know if you remember, but we had this party, I think it was a housewoman party, um, the house before we end now. Mm -hmm. And... We bonded literally over the ineptitude of the lions. Like literally, <laughs> I swear. Like we bonded over trauma. If that means, you know what I'm saying? Your lion trauma bonds. <laughs> no, like seriously. And then we went from the lions to the pistons and how like we everybody wouldn't know Mike James, Chucky Atkins, mm. Charlie Villanueva. Ben Gordon, Corliss Williams, and like these are names that <laughs> nobody knows. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. well, Pistons fans know. You know what I'm saying? Um, and so we really bonded over the ineptitude of our teams. And so we kind of kicked it a little bit from there. Text every blue moon. Mm -hmm. But then it kind of ratcheted up a lot once um once uh Maybe like a little bit after that, we really started. I really start understanding the character of Byron, and for me, I'm I'm not one that easily opens up like that. And mm -hmm. so, once I understood him, like for who he is, I was like, okay, this this he he could be one where he could be like around for a while. You know what I'm saying? That's and cool. so, and then, and then once once Vanessa got pregnant, we just kind of took off from there. Okay. We probably text probably every other day, probably right okay. now, over okay. some of everything now. So, mm -hmm. wow. And do you remember uh, any of the connection that you had, uh, Byron? Yeah, it was very similar to what Darwin said. Uh, I I really couldn't remember if it was at the wedding because, as he knows, you do a lot of, you know, baby kissing and handshaking at at weddings. Uh, yes, you see people, but you don't see people. Uh, but the my memory is indeed at the uh, the previous house out in uh, the Canton. Okay. Yeah. Um, so yeah, that was my first memory, and like you said, the the trauma bonding over the lions, and um, it was funny because I've met you know uh, uh, guys that you know um, that my my wife may work with, you know what have you, and they may talk about the lions, but like Derwin said these little these smaller players that you have to be a true fan to know because these players have irked your soul yeah. for the entire existence yeah. um that hit a, that hit a special spot so just being there like okay I, I can rock with this guy and um i'm a big uh person off i go off energy and if your, your energy is funny your your handshake ain't matching your smile yeah okay yeah okay i'll I'll be here with my ladies here, and after that, I don't, you know, I'm nowhere around. But no, but uh, Derwin, we definitely took one another, and like, no, this this is a brother, like, like, like you said, uh, this one gonna stick around. And then after, you know, Vanessa got pregnant, it just it ratcheted up, and um, we're, we're still here right now. Yeah, I love it. I love it. Thank you both for sharing that. I knew that would be the best way to introduce you both because, again, I joke around with you. I know I've known Derwin for a long time in his teenage years. Now you are in your um, adult years and then you have a wife and a child. And then Der 
excuse me, Byron, I've known you through your wife and through uh, Derwin and Vanessa, but I joke around with you just even before we said this, uh, got on the call, like, I didn't even really know Byron could talk, but like when y'all get together, <laughs> it's a totally different world. So to hear you both say how you connect it, it makes a lot of sense. And you just told mm -hmm. me today that the Lions actually won today. So yeah, yeah, yeah. The saga continues, right? <laughs> there, we, there we go. There you go. <laughs> there you go. I love it. I love it. So, okay. So another question that I have directed to you, Byron, um, I actually interviewed your wife a couple of months ago. Um, and Savannah Brewer is her name. And she, um, introduced a term to me from her um, company and your company, Rising Stars Doula, and it was postpartum depression for men or just a concept. I literally mm -hmm. had not heard of that prior to that, um, to that interview. Uh, the question that I had for you is that, because I know you are a part of Rising Stars Doula, is that one of the reasons why you became a part of Rising Stars Doula as a services as her husband? Or I just wanted to start off the conversation that way. 100 percent um I, you know you, you grow up we grew, we grew up uh we grew up you know 80s babies you know, early 90s babies or what have you and we used to seeing these mamas you know just, just do but they they swollen ankles and just they having a time yeah. and everybody knows they're having a time with this baby and uh people are very empathetic towards you know mom justifiably so sure but we think we often forget that it took two to get this child here. Yeah. And just like it takes two to get the child here, it's going to take two to get the child through and, and, and what have you. And we forget about the brother. And here's this guy who had his woman, you know, that had, had all her attention at one point in time. And now it's changing. And, you know, so many things change within the household. And yeah. he's often, you know, the forgotten soldier there. So, yeah, that was definitely my, my reason for jumping in. Thank you very much mm -hmm. for being a part of that and participating in the, the process because it is very important. I remember at the the shower for uh, the baby for Kobe, she's she's born now, but I remember I was recording you, um, <laughs> recording people, and then I spoke about that because I was just like, wow, I had never heard of a doula before Derwin shared with me and then said that you both were their doulas. And then I was like, wait, what is this all about? And then I just was very intrigued from the gentleman that didn't speak a lot, but you really spoke, I think, genuinely on the process too. Not just everything, but you were there for Derwin. So thank mm -hmm. you very much for uh, sharing that because I do believe it's important. So Absolutely. Uh, thank you. And then Derwin, the question I have for you is, um, again, I had never heard of the term postpartum depression. I didn't know the concept before um, Savannah told me about it. And I spoke about it with you. And then you shared with me um, that, yeah, you you experienced it. And what I know of you as a brother, like you focus on what you need to get done and you keep going forward with it. I would like you to um, share your experience and I want to make it um, normalized the help that is necessary or normalized to support, excuse me, men, like Byron just said, before, during, and after the pregnancy. Because again, until I talked it over with you, I was like, I didn't know it existed, but that wasn't even something in support that I was even focusing on you and you're my brother. So can you talk on your experience to see what, and just say it to listeners, what could help also to support men like Byron is talking about? Well, for me, I mean, as cliche as it sounds, I mean, but it's true. No amount of books or education can prepare you for what's to come. And I, for us specifically, um, we have been trying to have this one baby since 2013. And she was just born in 2021. Mm -hmm. And so Vanessa and I, we've been married since 2011. And so we're a decade plus, 11 years or whatever, always together, yeah. doing everything together, like leaving all the time together. Like it's just us two. And so when the baby comes in the fashion that she came, because we went through a lot of, um, for me specifically, um, a lot of traumatic instances in trying to get her here. 
Um, I don't really go into details about it, but it was it was a hard birth because everything happened fast. You know okay. what I'm saying? Yeah. And yeah. so so we had to have emergency C section and everything. And so even with the emergency C section, um, they pretty much told us like, "Hey, glad we did this because." The shortened umbilical cord that we said that she had, yeah, but the cord was wrapped around her neck. So it's good that we already had had this. And for a person like me who prepares everything, yeah, um, who values practice, who values the journey, um, to me in my mind, it was all going to be taken away from me before we even got started. And so I was already behind the eight ball emotionally, um, and so. Here, here we are, two people who are always together. Now we have this baby. And so now we are literally sharing the space with another human being while we prepared for it, while her room was already ready, finances are already in order. Nobody could have prepared me for the emotional aspect it would take during COVID um, yeah. to navigate trying to keep everybody safe and sane in the house. Um, and so that took a toll on me for, I would say, see, she was born in June. Mm -hmm. She was born in June. Vanessa didn't go back to work until in December, um, by mid, late December. I went back to work in September. So we were all together literally every single day for the first three months. I would say the whole three months, probably four, probably four months up to about October, I wasn't, I wasn't myself. Nobody knew it because we were just all in the house. And, and, um, and I mean, I don't, I'm not a person that opens up a lot to a whole lot of people anyway. So I just, you're right. I just kind of put my head down and go through it. Right. Um, and it only took time. And at the time I did read about postpartum depression. Um, there were times where I would, I wouldn't sleep well because I would have nightmares about, um, about Vanessa and the, the stage that she was in. Like Byron know, like Savannah would rush up to the hospital because, hey, the baby heart rate dropped. And see, these are things that for me, they don't work well for me. Got because um, while I understand the risks there are with childbirth, you never would really think it would happen to you. You know what I'm saying? Like you mm -hmm. understand it and you process it as well as you can. But for me, I wasn't I wasn't really emotionally prepared for what I was going to see. Understood. The only girl that I've the only girl I ever loved that I've ever been with like that, that I've ever really trusted is pinned down and hooked up to oxygen tanks. Like all because of somebody I don't even know this baby. Like, be, let it be clear. Like the baby's still a stranger. yo. You know what I'm saying? Like, I love right. my daughter, but that my girl. You know what I'm saying? Like, and so. I we we've actually had talks about yo if it come to it yo I'm not I'm not losing you we can make another baby but I'm not yeah and her being you know her and a woman and a noble sane person she said no I'll risk my life for the baby yeah I'm not I'm not signing up for that you know what I'm saying um so it was a lot it was hard um I don't even know to be honest with you how you normalize it because there is no real preparation for it. Mm -hmm. So the only way that you can really kind of go into a conversation is just start one. That's why Byron was so key. Um, and I don't, I don't think he understands um, how vital he was because I didn't, I didn't know a lot of, I, don't, I still don't to this day, but at the time I didn't know a lot of people who really got me. You know what I'm saying? Who really got how I think. Um, who come from a lot of the same situations I come from, who speaks a lot of the same language I speak. So even if I'm not directly talking about, hey, Byron, I got postpartum depression. Instead, it was more so, yo, man, you see what that nigga Bow Wow did on the internet, man? That's, it was crazy. Like, yep. him responding, what it did was, took my mind off of it, it, had, it gave me a little bit more rope to kind of lend myself to get to the next day. Because men, sometimes we don't just open up like that. So sometimes what we need is adverse. Like we need just, yeah. hey, distractors at times. Like how can I get my mind off to, to get me to the next day? Mm -hmm. And so that helped a lot. Um, and so hope I answered your question in the long form. 
I was just going to say you answered it so well. And that's why I'm so grateful you both are doing this because sometimes I think as women, we want to hear it the way that we need to hear it. But if I can say it back to you, one thing that you said in order to normalize it, we have to make sure that we're aware of it. How can you normalize something you don't even acknowledge? And that's what you said. You said, hey, just start to have the conversation. If we don't even know that it exists, we're not having a conversation. We're not checking for anything if we're like, oh, no, they're good. You know, so what I heard you say is in order to normalize something, we have to acknowledge it. And I think Mm -hmm. that in of itself to hear you as my brother, someone that I love dearly and care for as you what you just shared. And I want to bring this back to it because this is what you helped me see, because this is real. You know, Vanessa, you didn't know the baby. And yes, you love your daughter. But at that point in time, the baby isn't somebody you knew. And so for me, I think, I think us men, we got it wrong. I'm going to be honest. Mm -hmm. I think for us, we will champion the child over the person that we build a life with. And we cast the mom off to the side. Mm. But the fact of the matter is, because we see it all the time, you know, where men famous or not, they'll champion the children that they with. They love the children. They, they, they're raised, they're raising the kids, they do all that. But sometimes the mothers and what they have gone through to birth these kids, you know, and help you raise them and everything, they kind of get cast off to the side. And for me, I'm about order. You know what I'm saying? Like, I do stuff in order. Like, my girl comes before everything. Like, I don't even really call her my wife like that. You know what I'm saying? Because she's yeah. still... This little girl from from Pontiac that I met almost 15 years ago. Right. That's just what she is to me still to this day. And while I love that baby and I'll do anything for that baby and I'll die for that baby, she won't compare to the amount of love that I have for her mother. Because if it wasn't for that, she wouldn't be here. And so I need for her to understand as she grows up to because you know how mothers and daughters can be historically they get to argue you know i mean they already button hands already she's only 18 months you know what i'm saying but i have to establish the respect in the house so as kobe is coming up she can see nobody comes before her mm-hmm. nobody so respect is not a an option you know what i'm saying around here yeah. Yeah. And I think us men, we kind of really dropped the ball on that a lot. Like we put a lot of on we put a lot of ownership and and value into our children, which we should, but we do it above the moms. Mm-hmm. So that's that's an issue for me, always have been. Wow, wow. Wow. I just had to pause because it's true when you are thinking about like the average or the status quo, and that's what you're lining something up with you can always get off. And that's what, Mm -hmm. even this conversation, it's going to shift the the narrative because both of you are not the normal dude. And I'm not putting any pressure on you. I'm just saying like, just the way that you move and the way that you, you've chosen to live your lives. Nobody's perfect. Cause if we were like, we wouldn't need, we wouldn't need a savior. Right. (laughs) One thing that we do know is that it does take more intention to live a healthier life or live more Mm -hmm. functional than what we've known. It takes a lot more. So um, I just want to get back on. I had another question. You already started answering Derwin. So I'm just going to, you you talked about that lifeline that um, that Byron gave you. I'm going to just ask both of you um, supporting men. And honestly, right now in this week, we had a scenario where Twitch Uh, Stephen Boss, he Mm. um, took his life. By the time this episode comes out, it's going to be in the new year. However, um, one thing I realized, it was like it was something about the emotional world that he dealt with. Because I looked at his pictures and I was just like, if I was just going on pictures, I would never ask any questions either. So um, the next question that I wanted to double back with you, because you already talked about what Byron gave you that lifeline and what I heard from that. And I want to pull out and make sure people hear what Derwin said 
He didn't do it in the way that us women, as we typically do. Girl, we did. And you know what? We want to explain everything. You said something totally opposite of what you were dealing with, but that's what you needed to, it's almost like to give you some extra space and extra room, you know, to keep going. So can you both share three things that you have either helped you personally or that you would like to see take place in creating a space for men in a healthy way for you, for them to uh, express their emotions. And I say it, and again, I'm not trying to ask you to help everybody in the world, but you've already given us something, just something that may have helped you or something that you would like to see. And I'll just let you either just go for it. Well, excuse me. Well, for me, I would definitely say um, rest. Mm. Uh, I don't think we uh, value rest enough. It keeps us alive. Um, whatever, whatever it is, it can wait for tomorrow. Go go to sleep, and I mean, like, get some legitimate rest. Get off the couch and you know, go lay in the bed. You no, know, truly, get you some rest. Um, forgiveness. Uh, that's been um, something I've been working on for. Uh, a very long time. Um, once we kind of learn how to taper our expectations on people somewhat and realize that people are people, and even the things somebody may have screwed you on, it took a lot of steps for them to get there, and a lot of them steps aren't aren't their own. If that makes sense. Yeah, it does. Uh, um, and and just lastly, for sure, just talk about it talk about it um don't don't hoard how you're feeling and i, I agree with there and we definitely as men we don't definitely um uh, spew out how we're always doing all the time but never be too 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 stern where we can't get it out yeah hey man i just need to talk this out i i might i might not need your opinion i might need no suggestion i just need to just get it out got it and i I feel like the more times we talk about something it it, it loses power so what you know what you were you couldn't get out last month you keep talking about it before you know it you'll get a year from now and that'll be a thing that you don't even it's not even that big of a deal anymore wow 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 i will co-sign those um two of those i already had to be Uh honest with you um, but I'll definitely co-sign those. And what I would like to add to it is to, um, I'm a, I'm a perspective guy. And so if you could regain perspective mm. in whatever you're in, what you'll do, what you'll end up doing is a lot of times is you'll minimize what you have magnified. Mm. You know what I'm saying? And so for me, if I'm going through something, something like what I talked about, what what often would help me because a lot of times, like I said, we were just stuck in the house. Yes. So things would just start to be um, swollen around me. Um, things would just kind of get tighter. And, and so for me, I would regain, I would, it would be, be, be like little things that I would realize I'll be ordering some food and, and we'll put the baby down and we would just be sitting and I'll be realizing this is not normal mm. for Vanessa and I to be off for months when the baby's first born. This ain't normal. You know what I'm saying? Like yeah. they rush women back to work. Mm-hmm. Men don't take off work, but here yes. we are, we are off for months at a time. That's not normal. And so my perspective was to be grateful. Because what happens is we'll get lost in what it is and what it ain't and what it should be. And then you, you'll kind of lose all perspective of where you actually are, which is in a place where, you know, you're really blessed. Like you guys really worked hard to get in this position. And so while the process has some hiccups that you, you thought you planned for, but it didn't go as well as you thought it would look at where you guys are. Like, you guys don't want for anything. Like, it's, this is a beautiful thing, and this is actually generational. Because my mother didn't have this. Her mother didn't have this. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, my father was never around. Hers was never around. 
we're actually breaking generational curses while sitting at home in the pandemic. Sure. Perspective. Yep. You know what I'm saying? For sure. Um, and so I think as men, as logical as we can be sometimes, we're able to, I would say we're wired, I would say, I'll probably put it that way. We're more wired to look at things from a Doppler view than, than probably women would because women are actually emotionally attached to whatever situation that they're in. Mm -hmm. We have the ability, because I believe as because we're wired to be leaders, we have the ability to take a long view. Like, hey, I know it's bad right now, but look at the landscape of things. Mm -hmm. Things could be so much worse. And so mm -hmm. to add on to all that, I think if we learn how to regain perspective and not let ourselves get too far, I think we'll be uh, beneficial in the long run. Wow. Thank you both. I just want to thank you both for sharing that. And I hope that somebody else, a man specifically, and the women that love them, I hope that they can hear this and I hope that they can use that. And one, I hope too, that you both can continue to use it in your lives because I do respect you. And I, again, I appreciate you coming on. It's not even like I'm ending the... <laughs> <laughs> the interview right now but what you both share is very powerful and I want to bring back that you co-signed on Byron to say like oh I already had that anyway so um I appreciate you both sharing so this is one thing that Derwin I, I'm talking to Derwin like this because he he jokes around with me he's he was my first um subscriber to this YouTube channel. So he has heard me bumble through a lot of things. So with this one, he was like, he jokes around with me, but I'm going to say it correctly when I ask you both this next question. So the purpose of this channel is to create oh. a space. There we go. Here we go. And cultivate an environment where healthy relationship skills can be learned, developed, practiced so that they can ultimately thrive. <laughs> So that's the purpose Stick of the Stick fine and just keep memorizing. I'm yes, sorry. That's just so long sentence to be memorizing. But, but just like y'all said, it's like it's the process, right? It's the journey. I met him. And that, that's the real, the real intent of it. So that's why I, I, I'm so grateful that I can get through this in a different way. But again, you got to start somewhere, right? So mm -hmm. in, the, in the spirit of what we're talking about, I want to start, uh, well, you said normalizing, but I wanted to ask you both if you could share or just show what healthy dialogue looks like between two brothers uh, or brotherhood. And then that's one thing, because I know we as women, we want to think it of some some way or show it what it looks like. But then to have. Um, just share with women who love them and support them, what will cause men not to respond or uh, open up in a healthy way to have dialogue because I really think that's the important part too because I think sometimes you guys may want to but then we can shut you down Derwin you've helped me with that too with like a man's ego and just not coddling him but respecting and just knowing how to hold space so if you both can do that I'm gonna come to the background and just allow you to do what you need to do So for me, um, I don't want to do this. Um, I remember when, um, when Vanessa was in the hospital and now, now I, I want to be clear. Every man doesn't operate the way I do. I'm sure. sure. Um, I, I am not a you know monolith. I can do one thing, but then require something else. Mm -hmm. But in that moment, I remember this vividly. It was super hot. It was in June. I remember um, us being in a hospital. We had we we went in Friday uh, Wednesday night. We went in Wednesday night to begin the uh, C section uh, to begin the uh, induction process. And so, typically, when you start the induction process. Typically, it's go you're going to need all night those 12 hours to get the body ramped up to start mm -hmm. having contractions. Um, by this point, we're near the end. Vanessa was tired. I'm tired. I, I'm ready to get this <laughs> show started. And so we were in the hospital probably up to, I want to say, that Sunday afternoon. We was in the hospital. I want to say Saturday, I want to say it was. 
because baby was here. So I want to say it was Saturday. It was it Friday or Saturday? I forget. I needed to get to the house to give my cat some food. Well, Vanessa's cat some food. Um, but I knew that I didn't really have anything at the house. And so I wanted to go. Byron offered to come with me. Um, Savannah was good. Vanessa was good. Baby's good. We're good. I just need to step out. Um, real quick and run this errand. Byron came with me. We bonded more over talking about Jay-Z and Nas. <laughs> we talked about different kinds of other music. And it was super hot, but we went to the Kroger's. We walked around in that Kroger's. We got the cat food. We came back to the house. Um, I don't even think Byron came in. I came in the house real quick. I put the um, cat food uh, where the cat was, so she'll be good or whatever. And then we jetted back to the hospital. Okay. What that did for me, because I'm a, I'm a very um, focused guy, so I'm focused on the task. I was able to get my mind off for two seconds. That's all it took. And he offered to come with me. Believe it or not, Byron, that was the first time that weekend. That was the first time I've ever had um, Benito's Pizza. You know what I mean? Get it ever since. <laughs> that was the first time I ever got it. You know what I'm saying? For me, what I need is I need space to be able to sort out the things that are seem to be mounting up. What that ride to the store was, what the conversations was, I mean, we joked the whole time. We didn't, I don't think we talked about the baby or Vanessa, anybody at all. Um, like we just was kicking it, like nothing was going on. But I had a whole baby, like in the hospital. But I just, you know, I ain't showered properly in days because that's how the hospital rooms is. It's just weird. Um, I was able to properly, for me as a man, I was able to properly maneuver in a way where. I was able to breathe. Mm -hmm. So that way, when I go back into what I consider a war zone, which is, and you, you know, Jazzy, this is what I, I, I will profess it all the time. The three of us is coming home. That's all I cared about. Yeah. So I can go back in that situation and be able to manage all the things that I needed to manage. For me, that's what I needed. Got it. And, and he was there more than the brothers in my own wedding. And so I, I appreciate, I, I appreciate this brother. I really do. And I love him for it. I really do. Yeah. So Byron, would you like to add, or would you like to share what would be unhealthy ways or unhelpful ways for women when we're trying to support? Like you can go either way. The floor is yours. Mm. Mm. As far as healthy, I think it's just listening. Um, really, when we were in the hospital, um, I believe it was, might have been Wednesday night we were there. And Jasmine, honestly, if you did not tell us we was in the hospital, you'd have thought we was in the living room yeah. with margaritas. Got it. Picking it. <laughs> um, and... You know, like like we're supposed to be in there, you know, being, you know, rising stars, do love services, yada, yada, yada. We started talking about other things <laughs> like regarding family. And I left there, I left there with a breakthrough. Like when you sometimes when you go through things and you feel like you're the only one going through them. So man, it's just me. And yeah. then you talk to somebody else, like, wait a minute, I feel like I'm like, you know, like in the cartoons, the mirror, like somebody doing exact, it's, it's almost like yeah. that. Mm -hmm. um, I, I felt like that was like super, super healthy on both ends uh, for us both to kind of be able to get that out. Okay. Um, so that's all I have as far as healthy, but as far as unhealthy, though, I, I don't see it in my own life, but I've seen it in others where a man will confide in his, his woman about something. And she'll kind of throw it back at him. Almost, well, I'm trying to help you. Is it this? Well, baby, I kind of told you that in confidence and you kind of thought, is it this? Like, it, no, it's not that. It's not Got that. Got it. Mm -hmm. um, so that, that, that's probably like one of the, the, the worst things that, to me that can be done to ever throw something back at somebody and they tell you something in confidence. Um, but just 
speak, speak freely. Um, you know, I, it, making a two-way street. I, I think, I'm sorry, I'm just gonna uh, get emotional. <laughs> no, take your time, take your time, take your time. I think the, the, the biggest issue with all of us, like as a black community, like I say, is our lack of communication. Uh, we can resolve so much stuff from the highest things to the smallest things if we just sat down and talk, talked about it. Um, yeah, I'll leave that at that, yeah. I think I remember you saying that uh, when we were at Friendsgiving. I think mm -hmm. you did say that. Yeah, that, that sounds like me, yeah. Yeah, because you were just saying like there's so much that can be settled uh, mm -hmm. with just communication. I think, Darwin, you've echoed that before too. I've always said that. Yeah, I've always yeah. Said there is, there is nothing that can't be handled without a conversation. Yeah. I think if you if you're willing to have a simple conversation, there's nothing under the sun that just can't be handled. Like you can be able to overcome anything. Yeah. Now it may be a process. It may not be that one conversation. Sure. But if you get something started, I don't care what it is. I don't care how bad it is. I mean, you think about all the problems that we have in the world. There's just a lot of miscommunication, a lot of misunderstandings all over the place, mm -hmm. just all over the place. Cause people just may not know. And so you mad at somebody over here for doing one thing and they said, yo, I really just didn't know. I'm sorry. But if you never admit yes. that you were hurt by it, they may not ever. And so everybody's stubborn. It's just one of those things. I remember we was in a hospital and no, Byron's right. Like we would be sitting around talking every night up to about, it, well, literally until Vanessa ready to go sleep. Literally. Okay. Okay. Um, <laughs> yeah. We're talking about 11, midnight, one o'clock. Like okay. just talking. There was a TV in there. It's a nice hospital. The TV never came on one time. Mm. Out of all the nights wow. we were there. Because we would just talk for that mm -hmm. long. And it really helped us to really get to know one another well, talked about mm -hmm. family things a lot. Um, I mean, here we go bonding all trauma, you know what I'm saying? Like, mm -hmm. hey man, your mama hit you too. Like, yeah, me too. <laughs> like, that's that's how it was, you know what I'm saying? Like. We would just be bonding off of things, but the only way that that can happen is if you communicate. Mm -hmm. um, and it and it's a very it's a very underrated tool that we just choose to not use, or we just don't know how to. There you have uh, it. We, we we good at talking at one another. You know what I'm saying? Like mm -hmm. we good at judging one another, but really listening and really communicating with one another to kind of understand like where someone may come from. You know what I'm saying? Even if we disagree, at least I understand mm -hmm. where you're coming from. Right. You know what I'm saying? That's your perspective. I can understand that. You gentlemen have said it succinctly. So what I hear and what I've gotten down is that space and listening is helpful. And then the lack of communication, it could be in that same space that is not helpful or healthy in mm -hmm. the way that we mm -hmm. talk to each other, especially I'm saying for the women who are out here to say, well, they should need the, the way that we communicate <laughs> or the way that we take in this, um, the situation and the way that we respond, it can be helpful or unhelpful. It could be healthy mm -hmm. or unhealthy. So I really want to pause for the cause for that because I actually, um, it's this um, it's just not the course. It's what is being practiced, managing dialogue for crucial conversations. And that's what the whole premise is. You're saying the same thing. So many people know how to talk at each other, but when the stakes are high and when it's most important, that's when we're not pulling up our best skills. We're pulling up our, like, we're shoddy and we're just like, oh no, I'm just mm -hmm. going to pull out the sword. And you know, mm -hmm. that's not the time to pull out the sword. I can speak and I can dialogue, but when emotions are high, it's not the time to be mm -hmm. randomly mm -hmm. like mm -hmm. shooting off the cuff. So I appreciate you both saying that. So we're going to round this interview off. I am grateful. I, I'm going to possibly have y'all on for uh, the men's corner or something. I got to make something up with y'all because oh. y'all <laughs> dynamic duo over here. <laughs> I'm just saying. <laughs> So this is a okay, this is a question in support of Vanessa. And I'm gonna say Savannah too, because I know she would want to hear this too. So um 
Byron alluded to this and just talking about, especially in our culture, the last question I had was, if you could share what are practical ways, you already talked about communication and we can end it. If that's what it is with communication, you can give me more feedback. How can women champion the men in their lives? Uh, specifically as black men, you have specific nuances and you share I think what I've seen and heard in this conversation with both of you is something that we don't see a lot because it's not the um, acceptable. I, I'm going to honor both of you. One, because um, Byron, you're, you're in the, the conversation with your wife as well as the service with your wife. Mm -hmm. Derwin is in the conversation with his wife and with the service with his wife, but then we make that as the anomaly. We make that as the, um, that's not average. I know Derwin, he goes to the, you, you, you explain this to me. You go to the doctor's office and they're looking like you like, well, who are you? I'm the dad. Mm -hmm. So I, I guess I want to, again, honor that we're having this conversation because until you have the conversation and Byron, you said it earlier too, it's like, I love how you said it. And I believe I heard it in a way that as a woman, I can hear it from men. Y'all just need to keep talking over time. You don't need to talk like we do. We can talk for hours on end. You said we can just start the conversation. And then in the year, taking that long view, like Derwin said, hey, that's all I needed. And what I heard Derwin say about the news, the lifeline, you said that I just need more rope. And the way that you both gave it to each other, I think that's very helpful. So can you both let, just share whatever, or if you already given the answer, expound more on how women can be helpful for our black men because people are raising black men, they're married to black men, or they're in contact with black men. And it is a different nuance if we can be so honest. So that's all I have for my question. Just check on your black man. Check on your black man. Um, it's uh, it's rough out here, mm -hmm. and um, and I'm not just talking about in the physical aspect. Check on him. Just check on him and mentally. Um, we we are more like our fathers, our forefathers that come before us, who just bear this stuff and kind of grit through it. We are learned to kind of let some of it go, but we we still we're a work in progress, um, and hopefully. The, the men that come after us, the little boys that are boys now will come up and they'll be able to let a little more out themselves. So just, we gotta just keep working on each other and help each other on the way. So just check on your black man. Yeah, I, I agree. I think, um, I think oftentimes, and I've told, I've told, Jazzy, I told you this before, it was at the house a couple weeks ago. I told you that the most fragile thing in the world is the male ego. Mm -hmm. um, that thing can break so quickly and so easily off of the most minute things in the world, um, quicker than glass, it really can. And so what we're asking as black men as, well, I don't speak for all black men. I, I sure. wish I could, but we, sure. man, my brothers, man, we, we out here doing things that I, I don't approve of, but I'm speaking for the black man who is, who's making an effort. Uh, a conscientious decision every single day to be better, um, physically, spiritually, emotionally, mentally, um, however that looks, however you want to do it. There is no one way to success. So if you can just get there, let's just get there together. Mm -hmm. So I speak for those men when I say, we don't like to be judged. We really don't. And so when we bring up something, the first iteration out of a woman's mouth can't be judgment because what that will do is shut us down every single time, 100% of the time, because all what that's going to do is reaffirm those ideologies from the men prior to us that was, that taught us to shut down. You ain't got to talk about it. See, and all that, all that will do is just reaffirm those negative thoughts that we sometimes carry around that we probably shouldn't. Um, and so if we, if we can come to the table with, with our partners, with an open mind, with our sisters, with an open mind and just have a conversation judgment free, um, as less attitude as possible, that'd be great. Um, you know, where we can just have a open dialogue. I remember 
the situation happened with me at work that um, Vanessa literally just didn't, I won't say she didn't believe me, but she really couldn't fathom it. So it caused her not to believe me. Okay. It took January 6th in, insurrection when she was pregnant in okay. 2021. When she saw that, I think she saw race in a totally different light after that. I, mean, I think it had it had a lot to do with um, more maturity. I think it had a lot to do with her being pregnant. So emotions are probably heightened. Um, and so just looking at the landscape, probably COVID at the time, but looking at how the insurrection happened and just the amount of people that was in a space where what we've seen with people that look like us to be at somewhere uh, m- more minor than that, like a Target or a grocery store, yeah. things are getting done worse to us than it did to them at the Capitol. I remember her circling back around to that very thing that happened to me 18 years ago at my job. She was like, I now get it. Wow, I didn't know. See, but what 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 causes that and what helps that is patience. And so if we can be able to have a patient conversation with our partners, with our sisters, with our coworkers, mm-hmm. whoever, if we can have these kind of conversations, judgment-free conversations, um, where we're not trying to get things from one another, those kinds of conversations, I think we can be able to ultimately get to the other side. It's going to take time and it's going to take a lot of a lot of patience and all that, but I think it's beneficial. And so I know for me, um, my marriage is stronger because of it, because we've actually took the time out to, to actually learn one another. Mm-hmm. and to not judge and to actually kind of figure out yo is that really where you come from like spending time with her family her spending time with my family you start to kind of see things like oh you really went lying like oh right that, right that actually i can yeah. see that happening to you mm. you know what i'm saying like yeah. but if you don't spend the time like that with one another you won't ever get to that point Got you know it. what i'm saying so i would imagine um, with a lot of the things that Byron and I were talking about, familial things, you know what I'm saying? I would imagine him and Savannah, how they've been kicking it, they've been kicking almost 20 years now. Like, they start to spend time with one another and spend time with each other's families. You start to gain a, a better understanding about what makes them tick. You know what I'm saying? Like, those mm-hmm. things are important. Yeah. They're, 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 they're wholly important. But if, you, if you're not willing to spend that time, you, you won't ever find out. Spot on. Okay. I just want to give you space, Byron, if you want to say anything else. Because I'm done after this. So whatever you both have to say, I, thank you. I'm, I'm, I'm just, yeah, everything Carly said there is it's spot on. Okay. Yeah. So thank you both. I literally feel like what you've shared is such a gift, one to each other, to be able to hear it out loud. It's a gift to me and I hope, and I'm not even one that says this, but I hope this this interview, I hope it goes viral, literally. And honestly, only in the sense of being able to come into a space because you both have blessed me because like I said, I'm not gonna repeat my long sentence, but I believe you gave us the space where people can see that it's important to learn, develop, practice. That's the only way that we're going to get to the word thrive or the life Mm -hmm. of thriving. And I appreciate you both being willing. Um, I do want to, again, honor you both because literally I asked Derwin first because I was like, if I ask you, I know Byron will say yes. (laughs) <laughs> and I did ask Savannah to ask, but I literally, I, Byron, I saw you. When I asked you, you didn't bat an eyelash. So I was like, I don't know if it was that much prepping that went into it, but you said yes. But I really believe you said yes because you, you are um, connected to the process. You do believe in it. So I want to thank you both, and I want to honor you both for coming on. And this has been another episode this is the first episode that I have a microphone and I just wanted to say this out loud because my brother, my first subscriber, first microphone, first time that I had three people on, 
I think they're gonna be somehow part of this whole process, but I just don't know yet. So until next time, thank you very much, sirs, and thank you very much everybody for listening and watching.